Yay Networks. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Spill the Beans podcast. Heck yeah. That's all I got to <laughs> Energy levels are high, guys. Guess what we just finished doing? Tell them, babe. Oh, no. We just finished running 5.9 miles. And you guys, I feel like we sound like broken records. But for me, to start off, I was never a runner. I did track. I did sprinting. It was I would die, throw up at practice and stuff. But... I would always drive around, and if there was a person running, I'd be like, who runs for fun? Yeah. Like, please tell me. And now, after we finished running the 5.9 miles, I was like, now I'm like, dang, who runs for fun? Because that's so cool. I think yeah. that if you are able to get up and be like, oh, I'm going to go run eight miles today, you're a badass. So, anyways, all that to say that I never thought I'd be out here running five miles, much less one. Like, one mile for me... Uh, like in PE it was bad like four laps around the track I was like I cannot do this I'm gonna die mom please call me in sick um so now like just doing it is crazy and it's like you do kind of get a runner's high like after I was done I was like dang I can go for 10 more but not really because I'll pass out probably but anyways that's what we did today guys 5.9 miles down yeah guys we're getting in the groove of thing every week we're running more and more Trust me, I was never a runner either. I played soccer in high school, but soccer is more like short bursts of speed, like sprinting and stuff. And then you walk, you sprint, and then you walk. So it was never long distance like that. But we're getting really into this and we're motivating a lot of you guys through DMs and stuff. That's how we can tell. <laughs> you know what's so funny, babe? Yeah. <laughs> There's this thing that's like, a lot of you are asking me like, oh, where's this from? Where's that from? And I remember seeing a TikTok where I'm like, I want to see who, like who was to ask oh, you, yeah, you know? I've seen that. And it's so funny because I, I want to like post the messages out there, but I also don't want to like post the girls, but we dead ass. Every time we post yeah. about running, get five to 10 messages at least. Asking yeah, I us. learned my lesson because I was reposting like every once in a while. But then I, I reposted someone and then she was like, oh shit, I didn't know you were going to repost me. But, like, not, like, in the, like, oh, you didn't ask for my permission type way. She was just, like, shocked. So, I was, like, uh, you know, maybe that's my sign. Not everyone wants their business yeah. out there. If you do, obviously, that's why you tagged me, maybe. But I don't know. I don't know. I just don't want to risk it. But, yeah, ever since I saw that, babe, I I don't say. For those asking, <laughs> like, when I did my shoe haul the other day, I was, like, for those asking, these are the. No, nah, I was just, like, the number one requested DM I get is. Yeah, that's funny. But honestly, when we say, oh, a lot of people are asking this, if we say it on Instagram stories, it's because we actually did get more than one message at least asking us. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've seen a lot of people start running again or even just because they everyone would always ask me, like, how do you just how do you start running? Like, how do you make it a goal? And I was like, dude, you literally just wake up and that's you force start. your legs to start running. And that's how you get it. And so today was 5.9 miles but i've already been running for three weeks right babe yeah today i think um no tomorrow tuesday uh i'll be three weeks into my running journey so i've already been running for a while if i would have ran 5.9 miles without training i would have probably passed out girl but still sure. babe, three weeks is crazy you're killing it right now because it took me six months to do that but honestly guys when we say running we don't actually mean running for you guys like when you want to start just go outside and walk walk yeah. you know walk as much as you can the next day you know a little jog here and there combined with walking third day you, you know what make it a goal i'm gonna jog a whole mile i'm not gonna walk no matter how long it takes me or how tired i'm gonna jog a whole mile okay three weeks in i'm gonna jog two miles you know so make it like you have your whole lifetime, primeramente Dios, to like achieve this whole running thing. So don't try to, because that's uh, that's how a lot of people burn out and hate it right away. It's because they think they need to be sprinting out there in the sun. And then they're like, fuck this. This shit's hard. I'm never going to be a running. No, like we all start walking. I started walking. Yeah. Our, we ran the Lake McIntosh, which is the, what is it? The three, it was 3.5 miles. And it's the first 3.5 miles that I ran with Jonathan for his birthday. So we actually did cut down some time. I don't think yeah. that you checked your app to see how much we cut down, but this time it was much faster. So basically all you have to do is run, honestly, like make it a goal for you to run one mile at least. And you'll get there. I, I feel like a lot of people think that running is hard, but it's, I don't think it's 
the running that's hard i think it's your mental yeah. like your the how you talk to yourself in your mind because girl at two miles today i was like i'm dead like i literally told jonathan out loud i was like i'm dead babe yeah and then i become her little like motivation i'm like babe like think about all the kids that wish they could run all the people you know that uh, physically can't run because of the, the, you know accidents they've had in their life push it push it push it come on just give me one more and then she makes it i know and i'm so freaking tired i feel like running takes so much out of you especially because when we were done guys my apple watch was like you just completed 200 percent of your move goal <laughs> it, was like, it was 11 a.m girl so it is really hard and i think when you start running you have to realize that you have to fuel your body literally eat good i wouldn't say start running because you want to lean out lose weight it's like that comes with it but you have to be really good about feeding your body and eating your carbs you know because that's what makes energy in your body so anyways that was our tangent guys yeah we guys but we're, we want to cut so to the excited. good part about this running thing blanca and i are interested or we're thinking about making like bringing the running to you guys we're thinking about you know in the most popular areas of you know that follow us on youtube and and all social medias which is like la dallas houston probably denver uh, we want to make like little like, what would you call them, babe? I'd call them like little meet and greets or get together. Social runs. Social runs. That's the word. Yeah. Um. A lot of people are actually asking me like, oh, for the first. Oh, like, really? On a, a lot of people? <laughs> yeah. Like two people on Instagram <laughs> said that at least like once a month, like the she said the first Sunday of each month, we should do um like get together and run a mile yeah. with our followers. And I was like let's do it baby I and think, i was yeah. sorry and i was thinking about doing it at lake macintosh like that would be so yeah. badass but imagine like 40 people show up and we just have the whole thing yeah crowded. i don't know how we would do that not yeah. saying like oh so many people would come but we would have to do an area where we won't become like a disturbance to other people mm -hmm. but the second thing guys we show up right obviously one it could be completely free obviously obviously but two everyone that shows up we can pay like 10 bucks and then that money goes to like a charity or the local humane oh, society oh yeah that'd that be way so every nice. month we're doing something towards the community you guys get to hang out with us talk to us run with us uh and then you look forward to it every month so every beginning of the month you try to improve your time or you try to do better or you try to you know what this and that and then we can all just motivate each other if that's mm -hmm. something you guys would be interested or like you would be like yes jonathan i would go if you came to la i would go if you came to texas like let us know in the comments because this, if you don't comment we're not gonna do it you guys <laughs> gotta let us know if this is a good idea or not and it, don't worry don't get scared it, it won't be running like you know, like, you know, jogging. no, it would be like a little slight jog, maybe. And then we can all finish at different times. Not everyone has to. We don't like, no, like some of you guys can stay back and walk it. We'll wait. We'll obviously still be mingling at the finish line or whatever or at the end of the loop. And we'll be waiting for you. Like if you all you can do is walk it like that's perfectly fine. Yeah, that's so exciting. We should definitely let us know if you want to do that. We would probably start here in Colorado and do something fun. I would love to do Lake Macintosh, honestly. I feel like people will show up. But that's a little bit hard to not become a yeah, disturbance. Like Macintosh is it's pretty wide in some parts, but then some parts do get really narrow. narrow. So we would all have to get like in a single file line, which isn't or that much Or we would fun. have to make it be like... Um, super early. Super early or like a sign up thing. Like we would have to do use a Google sheet and just have like... 20 people sign up and that's it. Okay, you know? if 28 show up, you're going to not let them? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> nah. oh i don't know guys just let us know yeah. anyways guys let us know in the comments don't forget or else we're not gonna do it this episode is also brought to you by kiwiko a core memory that i have is building forts with my brother i feel like that really helped me explore my creativity and it was so fun KiwiCo projects are designed by a team of educators, makers, engineers, and rocket scientists who brainstorm hundreds of ideas to create the most exciting, age-appropriate, and educational projects. The project that we really loved doing with Franco this month was the sort and stack puzzle blocks because we were able to see how creative he could get and how many different things he could build. Another thing about KiwiCo is that it's great because it has games and projects for all ages. KiwiCo believes that every kid is naturally creative and curious and that hands-on experiences build creative confidence and problem-solving skills that can change the world. KiwiCo crates are fun and stress-free. That way you can spend quality time tackling fun projects together. 
These are real engineering, science, and art projects with high quality materials. Redefine learning with play. Explore hands-on projects that build creative confidence with KiwiCo. Get 50% off your first month plus free shipping on any crate line at kiwico.com slash spillabeans. That's 50% off your first month at K-I-W-I-C-O dot com slash spillthebeans. Let's go on. I asked people on Instagram with the Spill the Beans Instagram. You guys decide the topic for today. So I uh, I let you guys submit whatever you guys want. So we're just going to talk about a little like Q&A, but not a Q&A about us, but about like you guys. So you guys decided the topics for this podcast. Ready? Yes, sir. I Probably the number one requested, according to three people. No, I'm, I'm not going to get that out of my head now, babe. <laughs> um so let's start at the bottom okay so this is one of the most uh dm'd one or what is it called submitted ones money management and married couples or couples living together and then another one above that uh well there's a lot about that but i wanted to read this one too because it says um i just remember what it says so if i can't find it while i'm scrolling it said number one uh cause of divorces is bad money management problems or finances can't find it but i clearly remember it said that so i was like oh i didn't know that i thought it would be like cheating you know <laughs> it's like I'm the number cheating. one cause of divorces oh money management married couples or couples living together it's one of the main reasons of divorce yeah it is i think it is right i, didn't know it, that. I think it is top top number I just, one i don't know obviously i'm not saying our marriage is the most perfect by any means right like we still have our arguments and stuff, but I just don't see a world where we maybe argue about finances. Even if times got rough, I feel like, I don't know, as a man, I, f I always try to take initiative or responsibility over those things and how to better them or how to make more money. And then two, if there's an argument, it's because the man is arguing back. So then like, what is he saying? Like, no, you got to make more money or you got to pay more. Like, yeah. can you kind of run me through, like, how these arguments would happen? I guess <clears throat> I have no idea because obviously, like we said, we've never lived through um, arguing about finances. But I don't know. Like, I really don't know because when we got married, we started combining our finances a little bit yeah. and um, taking like I helped with the bills, with the rent and everything. But. Even then, like, I don't remember ever having to struggle because at the beginning you were still at your nine to five. So you were yeah. making your own money and then I was making my own money. And I feel like now we make our money together in a yeah. sense. So I just feel like you have to prioritize your relationship in a way that monetary arguments shouldn't be the cause of like. I don't even I don't know. know. I think like, if you're married a lot, your love should be way stronger than financial arguments. I understand other arguments in terms of like what type of person you are, arguments about raising your kid. But yeah. when it comes to money, I think the man should step up and the woman should either be compassionate or save that money that the man's making. Does that yeah, make sense? Yeah, because usually, well, in traditional marriages that I've heard, it's like obviously the man kind of gives his check to his wife. His wife knows where it's going, mm -hmm. the bills, the groceries, everything. And his job is just to basically bring in the money. And I think that it's hard because I know that there's a lot of marriages that have separate accounts, like it's the husband and the wife. But with us, it's like we share everything. Yeah. So... We, I feel like we know how much money each of us is, are making because I feel like a lot of people maybe have the misconception that I just make money by myself and Jonathan helps me. But it's like Jonathan literally, he does everything else. All I do is my channel, like my social medias. He does the podcast, J&J, &J, um, our Vibe & Co. Literally, guys, I was <laughs> sitting the other day and <laughs> Jonathan was like, hey, Tell babe. Them, babe. He's like, hey, babe, I really need I was editing a TikTok on, at, on, in the office. And John's like, hey, babe, can you come fix the printer? Um, I was like, yeah, sure. And then like two minutes later, he's like, oh, can you actually stock up the, the label printer? And then I just looked at him. I was like, damn, am I really just the inventory gal and the yeah. fixer gal? <laughs> Literally, guys, I have like I helped Jonathan with choosing the colors, approving the designs um kind of a social media promotion like i kind of take or i post the pictures on vibe and co but he 
he does everything girl i don't know like if he told me to go on shopify and be like hey can you give me this and this i'd be like girl like bffr i yeah, can't guys, do Blanca that just wakes up and the shirt's already there for her like the not the vibe shirt that you guys absolutely love like i made that i made that in my uh, little like ipad like from scratch like i didn't pay anyone to make that the letters her face like i did all of that a silhouette which i'm really proud of because i'm just learning but yeah from the moment that design was made on the ipad to the minute it's in your hands like that's all us you know yeah so. like jonathan literally with his apple pen yeah. <laughs> went and wrote not the vibes the way that i told them i wanted it and so i don't do that like jonathan takes care of everything except my channel so that's why i'm saying like even though he makes his own money and i make my own money everything is in the same account and we both know like say i have a hiccup right and mm, something is due and i don't have the money i know that i can go to jonathan and be like hey babe can you spot me for this and i know that he would never be like are you why like why don't you have money yeah. like that's never been and i think that it's different because jonathan never tells me like why are you buying this why are you doing this why are you doing that with your money i think he just tells me when i really am buying things that i don't i need. give her suggestions yeah. i'm like hey babe do you really need that and if she i've never been like you can't buy that yeah or you shouldn't buy that no. he always is like oh do you really need it or you know and it's just different because i just don't know how we can get like talk about money and then it escalate to an argument mm -hmm. and then escalate to a divorce the only argument we ever have about money is babe i want to make more money like yeah. i get in i get this like flurry of inspiration i'm like babe i just want to be a fucking millionaire so billionaire so like i can help people not because i want a yacht or a house on the beach or anything no it's like i want to help as many people as i can i want to retire your parents my parents buy them houses yeah. and i think it's different also because jonathan is that very much that like i want this i want that to make more money and i'm very much the money comes and goes yeah. <laughs> and i'm just on for the ride you know not saying that i don't also want a lot a lot of money but say i don't like i don't stress about it no you don't you know so and i know that you literally have to work for your money so sometimes like literally someone's i'm like i'm up on las pilas i'm gonna post four videos i'm gonna post these tiktoks do this and I'm always kind of looking for more creative ways to get money on social me on social media by doing the things that I love. And Jonathan is always like, he's like the business person, you know, uh, talking about businesses, Vibe and Co. Like literally, Vibe and Co. And the podcast, I can wholeheartedly whole wholeheartedly say that it was all Jonathan's idea. Like I'm just here. Like I show up and I film the podcast, girl. Like he literally made all of this happen so i'm he takes initiative in that way so i just don't see us arguing about finances because i feel like you always have it you know like yeah. if i'm if i ask you for something okay i got it you know and i don't know i just feel like that's how every man should be there's this phrase guys that i saw on tiktok the other day and even though i don't agree with it 100 percent, i do think i agree with it with finances and that saying is a marriage shouldn't be 50 50 it should be picking up each other's percentages when the other couple is low so what yeah. do i mean by that let's say your husband a lot of mexican males hispanic males they work outside right so if the weather especially here in colorado it snows it rains then the hours are affected and the check might be lower than other days so then that's when the woman is like you know what babe like i got you I, i'll i'll work a little bit more or you know it's okay you take care of the kids and i'll do this and that you know or the man if the man's in the summer making all this overtime all these hours then he should tell his wife hey babe how about you don't go this week you know i got you like stay with the kids take them to the park to the swimming pool that's when i mean like if you're if your couple if your spouse is at a 25 percent, then you have to be that 75 you know and i think couples mess up when they expect everything to be 50 50 so let's say your man is working his normal hours and for some reason you got let go or your hours were cut but he expects his half of the bills to still be paid then that's fucked up yeah. like he should be carrying that load vice versa or whatever the case may be and i think that's why we've never argued because blanca and i we just don't have that like money is just this thing it's like water. The best way I can explain water, I mean, money is like water. Like, it's so, like, flexible and moving that it'll go into her account, my account, my checkout app, pay, her checkout. Like, we don't, like, hold on to money like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, the other day, she asked me, oh, can you buy me the, the, can you, do you have cash app? And I had to cash app, like, this person for this legging she wanted. And I was like, 
okay, that's cool because I know my wife pays for other stuff for me. You know, like we just don't hold on to money. Like I feel like the more you hold on to money, the more it's going to go away. I just focus on making more, if that makes sense. Yeah. I don't ever focus on holding on to it. Yeah. And I think it's also hard because I have always been an independent girly. The I don't need no man. I'm going to make my own money, whatever. That's been my like always always in the back of my head and i love that right like i love independent girls that want to work that want to bring in money but a veces like you want to be taken care of you know so even whether you work or not it, you it just monetary purposes shouldn't be the reason for your arguments like the bills the rent all of that I feel like you have to be super open and transparent. I think when we got married, we talked about how much debt we had. We talked yeah. about how much money we made. Um, when Jonathan came full on to social media with me, we literally just said, hey, babe. Like, literally every month, we're like, oh, how much are you making today? Yeah. I mean, this month. Oh, how much are you making this month? And, oh, have my managers paid us? Like, you know, stuff like that. So, it's just, you have to literally be an open book about your finances, your debt, your, your money, the bills, everything. And just know, I feel like... You have to know how much money he makes, where he, what he pays it to. Like down to, we know what subscriptions we have. You yeah. know, like we know the Netflix, all of that. So, I just don't understand. Like there has to be something else. You know, yeah. it should. Think, it can't just be the monetary. And that has to be cut at the root. Let's let's say right now the only problem that comes to my head that could be like your man being like stingy, like oh well, I don't work and he controls all the all the money he's making. He no me quiere dar para ropa nueva or las uñas yeah. and stuff like that. Then, girl, the only advice I can give you, I'm sorry if it's too late for you, if you're reading this, but if you're a single girl and you're maybe, you know, or you started dating a guy, then really check his priorities with money like early on, you know, because you can catch a lot of red flags when you bring up money. You know, say you're casually going on a date for ice cream. It's your third day. Talk like, hey, what do you think, you know, a rent should be paid or a mortgage should be paid? Like, what do you think about like payments when we move in together? And then that will tell you a lot about him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just literally, you just have to talk. I think that's and I, I guess just let us maybe tell us a little bit further in the comments if you guys know exactly what problems can come up with that. Because I know there's other things where guys don't let them work and they expect them to be a stay at home mom. And this girl kind of just wants to have money yeah, to exactly. like go to Target, that's a very go tough to Starbucks. Yeah. And that's super hard. So I don't know. And also, I think another thing I did want to say about this is I've seen a lot of girls on TikTok do like i mean simply like at night on my for you page a lot of small like really small content creators pop up during their day in the lives and stuff and they're like oh i just wish i had money to like go to starbucks like all these girls go or go to go to target and do all these cute uh, hauls that these girls make and i'm like you don't have to like these girls a lot of these girls vlog their day and go to target and go to starbucks because they're already making money from tiktok so they know they need this content right but if you think about it, like if I think about it, I don't remember ever going to Target for fun. Like, oh, I'm gonna, just no. going to go see what I buy. I, I was always like, I'm going to go to King Supers and I'm going to get my groceries or, you know, like you don't have to want to live the lavish la lifestyle that a lot of girls put on, especially because you don't know their finances and you don't know their priorities either. So it's like, don't don't compare yourself to these other girls either that are like going to starbucks getting their nails done every day even if they're moms or not you know it's just también eso. you don't have to compare yourself to the social media world that you're looking at yeah. and then a part two to this whole financial thing since like i said i keep saying it's the number one but this girl actually it was too long for the question so she dm'd it she's like can you guys please talk about financial advice as in how do you guys do it at such a young age and now with a baby boy me and my husband are the same age as you both, and I'm currently pregnant with a baby boy, but living in California is so expensive even to rent an apartment. It's so st stressful because we are currently with my mother-in-law, which she's wonderful, but now with the baby coming, we would like to have our own place. I love you guys. Okay, that makes sense. So I wanted to touch base with this for like a lot of... The number one thing I want you to guys to get out of this, and it's sad but true, I think the best way to get out of the matrix the rat race whatever you want to call this like life of like working all day and paying bills and go, repeating this vicious cycle is to just start your own business guys i do not i've i've gotten that advice from so many other people and i think it's true the only way you can truly escape this make enough money for yourself and your family is by starting something of your own you're never no matter how many promotions you get um 
como se dice raises you get, whatever, you still are a slave to time. And let's say, let's flip it around. You, you have a normal job, but you're making a lot of money. But I'm sure that more, the more money you make, I've noticed with a company, the more time they take away from you right like say you're you become a super important ceo sure the ceo is making a lot of money for this company but i bet you when he gets home he still gets calls about problems he has to fix he ha wakes up early you know he probably can't be at his kid's soccer game on a saturday uh, morning so what i'm saying is like if you have a certain passion for something nails making stickers anything doing hair uh making popsicles whatever whatever start your business girl that's the only piece of advice i can give that i've seen truly work i'm i'm very blessed to uh like come from a very entrepreneur family my grandparents have carnicerias my mom they they have a trucking company and now we have vibin and it's just it's always grown in me I, when i was younger we joke about this a lot like i can never keep a job i've always had jobs and it's because i don't like people telling me what to do i would always quit as soon as like obviously i listen you know constructive criticism my manager tells me to do this yeah i'll do it but as soon as they become assholes or they're they think they're in power i quit and i get a new job And I've always had that, like, I want to start my own thing. I want to start my own thing. And Vibin is the first thing. I still want to open my restaurant. I've always wanted to have a Marisco's restaurant. And then when I have my restaurant, I want to open another business and another. So I just think opening your own business is the only way to escape this. Yeah. And I think that it's easier said than done. Oh, wait. YouTube is a business. Oh, yeah. So that's how, that's our first business technically we're the employees for our business and that we have to do marketing for our business we have to buy like blanca said we have to buy props it's so funny because sometimes she's like babe i'm gonna stop by a target but it's only for my tiktok like it's true it's an investment for her tiktok because it makes the tiktok more aesthetic it shows you girls what she orders from tiktok because she gets that question a lot i mean starbucks so <laughs> it's like it's like that investment of like you know yeah and i know that i feel like a lot of people because even me if you don't come from like an like a business mind i would be honestly be sitting on my podcast on this watching this podcast and i'd be like what are you talking about like what if i don't want to start my own business yeah. like what what do you t tell them then well if you don't want to start your own business i just see it like very tough to like because another example i want to give for example a business not only a lot pays you with money but it also pays you with time, which I think is very, very valuable. You know, I'm a, I, I was thinking about this before the podcast and I wanted to be very transparent. Back when I was like a garbage man, I would be making, you know, $4,000 to $4,500 a month. You know, I started off like at $21 an hour, but working a lot of hours. So that was, at the time being, what, 20 years old, mm -hmm. 22, 21. 21 was a lot of money. I was like, I'm making a, quite a bit of money for a youngster, you know, and I have my CDL. As soon as J&J &J Vlogs started making the same or a little bit more money, even though I could have like kept both at it, you know, I would get off of work tired, but still I could be making could combined $8,000 a month. I quit my job as we talked about it, right? As soon as J&J &J makes enough at more or more than my job, I'll quit my job because time is everything. I get to wake up at whatever time I want. I get to sleep at whatever time. And now with the sun, thanks to you guys and thanks to our YouTube channel businesses, we, I get to, I, I got to see the first time he walked, the first time he said dad and all that. So and that's another thing I wanted to like, you don't only get paid with like, money like physical money it's also the time so even though i was i was barely making a couple hundred dollars on jj &J more than trucking i quit right away because i was like hell yeah i'm gonna get paid the same amount of money but in time is everything we got to travel to gabby's wedding and then lulu's party that december and we did so much traveling after i quit my job it was crazy so oh but to answer your question i guess the, I, i don't have an answer to that because all my brain knows is business and if you Because I know you, baby, and I know, like, if it weren't for me, you wouldn't. No te llama la atención to start mm -hmm. a business, but you don't see that YouTube is a business. Yeah, I guess so. Um, also, another thing is that a lot of the businesses that I, I feel like are super common is, say your dad's a construction worker, like, you start your own construction company, yeah. you know? And I think that for a long time, it was, for me, it was, oh, like, I don't see what you have, like, why do you have to start a business when you, there's already businesses and you can just work for them? And I think as I, well, when I started dating Jonathan, he was always the, oh, I want a Lamborghini, I want this. And he wouldn't just say, like, oh, I want it. Like, he would tell me what his plan was to get to that Lamborghini. And 
I was never like, well, even I'm still not so much of a business person, but Jonathan has always been like opening. I want to open this business. I want to do this. I want to do that. So then I just opened my mind to that area of life, like business making. And it's like, yeah, everyone has their own business. Like I have friends that their parents have their construction companies. Jonathan says um, his grandparents have their carnicerias. And it's like, oh, damn, like all of these people are doing it like you have to go if you love your job you have to go a step further you know yeah and it's like if you love doing nails and you're at a nail salon you're still paying rent for your little space might as well just go work at home girl and pocket that rent money you know so it's like if you see the llama la atención makes sweets honestly just start a cute instagram page make some chocolate covered strawberries put some cute glitter and start selling and tiktok and tiktok tiktok is your best friend guys honestly a video can go viral overnight and it is the biggest plus of tiktok honestly i, yeah, love I was thinking that about reason. that when we started we didn't have tiktok we still had vine right yeah and then musically which no one used for promotional yeah. videos but now i see people like we all know santi you know he worked at home depot now looking at him the willito and all this so really tiktok is your best friend guys i would get on tiktok before they shut it down because the fact that tiktok already went to congress means that maybe it's not headed in the right direction or <laughs> won't be here very long so yeah. get on it before it's too late yeah i love that i love tiktok honestly i'm on there 24 7 girl hopefully that helped guys that little rant i know that sometimes we speak from a very privileged like i don't yeah. want you to be like oh you can't come up with any idea of how you would fight about money because you don't struggle with money you know i don't want that even even if i still was a truck driver a garbage man and blanca was still at her, her woman's clinic you know as a what you do the medical assistant. medical assistant like i don't see a world where we would still argue because even when i was 16 working at beat-ups and she still didn't have a good job or at dairy queen I would always try to pay for dinner. I would never let her touch a tab or anything like that. We yeah. just, our intentions were always to like not let money get in the way of us. Yeah. You know? Um. Oh, I was just thinking about this too. Would you ever let a subscriber be on the pod? Oh yeah, we've talked 100%. about this before. Yeah. And I would I think, love to have you guys. Like, let's say we go to LA and we plan on having like a guest, like another influencer or whatever, which we have planned like Phoenix uh la houston dallas all this i feel like might as well get someone from that area as well yeah come on i would love babe, that am i boring you no babe i don't know why i'm so <laughs> fucking tired honestly like send help for real you don't know why you're tired after six miles babe. yeah see yeah sorry um but yeah guys that's something we've always wanted to do um to be honest with you and this is for future like yous that are like you know i'm interested of going on the podcast I feel who recently did a podcast. Someone did a podcast of a friend of ours. I cannot think of who right now, but they said they had a subscriber on and the subscriber on DMs was super like, yeah, I want to be on your podcast. I'll do it. But then when they got there in person, super awkward and quiet and shy and didn't want to talk, would answer the questions like, yes, no. So what do you do? Yes. You know, so that's what something we don't want to happen that like in DMs and something you might be like super outgoing and then we get you here because trust me, guys, you, a lot of people do experience camera shyness. Yeah. Like as soon as you're in front of the camera and the podcast, you, you go quiet, which is OK. I'm not expecting everyone to be an extrovert, but we just don't want for the sake of time and for you and for our viewers and, and receiving a quality podcast. We don't want someone to be like super outgoing on the DMs. We get you on and then they're like, yeah, <laughs> no. So like if we do do it, please um we'll we'll reach out to sir uh, like to i guess how would we pick them i think that i don't know because what i was thinking is you could also just we could come up with a topic beforehand that they're comfortable mm, with yeah, you know true. so then it's gonna incline them to be able to talk more because they they're familiar with the topic yeah so it's like oh you've been in a toxic relationship two years ago you want to talk about it spill the tea let's go <laughs> yeah know? that would be cool so if you have been in a toxic relationship and you want to spill all the tea Please come on our podcast. Yeah. Toxic <laughs> relationships with either like an actual partner or your mother-in-law, suegra. Um, I don't know. Oh, other kids like um, ¿cómo se llama? Like stepkids and stuff like yeah. that. That'd be cool. Okay, this is another big popping one, and I'm sorry for all the viewers. No, you know what? I'm not sorry. If you don't have a kid yet, and this might like be like, oh, I don't have kids, Jonathan. But no, it's for future you. You know. Yeah, save this and come back. <laughs> parenting how do y'all feel about spanking screen time etc another one here is um it was really 
worded good. It was like parenting. Can you talk about parenting? How to deal with tantrums, teaching, etc. And I wanted to say this really quick, guys. Whatever you think that you're how you're going to be a parent, I want you to grab that idea, roll it up in a ball, and stick it up your on ass. It a lot of times <laughs> and throw it out the window. Because I trust me, when you see the little light in your baby's eyes and you see them giggle and love you and, and hug you and kiss you, all that like, oh, I'm going to be such a strict parent. All my kids are going to be an iPad kid. Fuck that, guys. And I throw myself under the bus first because I always said I'm going to be the more tougher, strict parent, this and that. And, and no, mi hijo no me va a hacer berrinches porque yo lo, lo, lo va a tranquilizar. And, and not with hitting, but like, you know, I'm going to be stern and stuff like that. Hell no, guys. And I'm not saying Franco does whatever he wants. No. But you have to kind of parent... You just have to parent with love. And with strategies. Yeah. You need a lot of strategies, there, At the girl. end of the day, yes, we, we say babies are smart, you know? They know what they're doing. Okay, one, they're not that smart. They're babies. Get it <laughs> over yourself. You're the adult. You're the smarter one. You're the one that has access to the internet, to TikToks, to psychologists, to baby psychologists. So you, it's your responsibility to trick them into, I don't know, being like better kids. Does that yeah. make sense? Mm -hmm. Like instead of... You know, old parents, all Mexican parents would be like, Siéntate ahí, comete todo eso. You know what I mean? Like, now it's times have changed. The times are different. Now we talk to Franco, le llegamos por este lado, por el otro, and we still receive this. We receive the same outcome, but we avoided all the trauma, all the screaming, all the hitting. Yeah. I think my biggest ick and my biggest, like, what are you doing for parents is when they hit their kids and i don't know i just i don't know like i do believe in hitting your kids when they're old <laughs> no, my, just when they're 15. old yeah yeah no i'm being serious like, honestly that's yeah that's a different to, story though 10 to 18 as long as you're living in my house we're catching hands because obviously with like severe things like if i catch you with uh like doing drugs or stuff like that like i truly think at that age you're seeing the necessity so when sape or si te están faltando de respeto, una buena cachetadilla every once in a while, you know? Yeah. But no, no. We're talking toddlers, kids. No, absolutely not. I just feel like everything depends on how you raise your kids, right? So I feel like if your kids have a good childhood and start going into a adolescencia, God damn, I can't talk. When they go into their teenage years, right? And their friends are the best thing. Nothing else is important to them. They want to do drugs, whatever, right? <laughs> My thing is that if your child respects you and is kind of terrified of you, they're not going to do it, right? But it's like these kids are getting crazy, girl. So mm -hmm. I just like think about a 13-year-old doing drugs. Like I honestly feel like if you disrespected me that much, I'm going to slap the shit out of you. And I'm just kidding. Like obviously I'm not going to abuse my son. But that's like when they're 15, like maybe un sapecito aquí, yeah, yeah, you know. But I'm talking about like toddlers, kids under 10 years old. If I ever see a parent hit their kid, I'm like, oh my God, why did you just do that? Especially yeah. in a public place, my girl, because we've experienced that before. And I just, I don't know, like, how can you look at this beautiful child that you created and you decided to bring into this world and hit them? Especially a little kid. So yeah, I think the best way to put it, guys, is that long term, no short-term success versus long-term success well what do i mean by that you hitting your kid in the mouth or in the butt when they're acting now in front of you is going to solve the problem yes immediately mm -hmm. right but then you're going to have long-term consequences whereas like if franco screaming and crying and tantrum and acting supers my solution right there and then might not be the quickest it's going to take him a while to shut up it's going to take us probably leaving the facility because he's uncontrollable but he's going to be like, he's still going to grow up. Like, Franco still, after, like, he cried, he still comes and hugs me and loves me, you know? Yeah. Whereas, like, if I started hitting him, he would not, babies are smart. He would probably stay away from me, not come to me when he feels bad or is sick or whatever. So it's like that short-term resolve versus long-term. Yeah, hit, slapping your toddler in the mouth at Applebee's will get, get them to shut up right away. But you're just creating a long generational, like, generations and generations of trauma and when he's 18, he's going to be like, nah, fuck you, mom. Like, you hit me and you hit me a lot. Like, and then you got this eight-year-old that doesn't want anything to do with you. So. Exactly. And I just 
feel like a lot of people get super stressed out and they're like in the moment they're like i'm just gonna slap him so you can shut up right because i feel like a lot of people do this because they feel the pressure of other the other people, people that are around them. them but it's like you guys have to remember that everybody was a child once everybody has mm -hmm. a kid has experienced a kid everybody knows what a child does and everybody knows about tantrums everybody knows that so just so that you can make them more comfortable, which I'm pretty sure they're not even uncomfortable. No, half of them have kids or were parents at a time, so they probably understand. Yeah. So it's like, don't try to do something just because you want to please other people. You just try to manipulate the situation in a way. Like with Franco, I feel like when he doesn't throw tantrums, but sometimes he's like fighting his sleep and he's like kind of crying, squirming. And I'll just be like, okay, okay, like what song do you want? What song do you want? And you just have to find their sweet spot you know franco's sweet spot is songs and, and songs about horses <laughs> so yeah. we have to sing him songs about horses of the, of the farm and food as well so you just have to really know your child enough to not hit them i just think hitting is a no-no or for patience me. yeah and like, be are patient. you really gonna pick this 30 year old woman that might be staring at you at buffalo wild wings because your child is screaming over your own child think about yeah. that for a second hopefully i'm putting it in a different perspective you're gonna hit your little angel that doesn't know left to right because a karen is staring at you at a restaurant like really or you're gonna take them to the bathroom or you're gonna i understand some kids are crazy and trust me you i know i said less than 10 but it gets to a point where like even six and seven they're crazy and they do it with an intention mm -hmm. they might grab a sharpie and, and scribble around the walls and they know what they did but still guys it's like like i said do you want a short-term problem or result or a long-term your kid yeah you might beat the shit out of them because they scribbled on the walls but who knows maybe they have adhd or they have that you know they can't stand still so did you take them to the park to exercise did you pay attention to them that day like they're not just grabbing sharpies for no reason you know yeah the other day we i was watching we were franco and i were watching tv well watching tv slash playing and i found myself that i was on my phone while he was playing and you know i don't know like tiktok got a hold of me and i was just scrolling 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 probably a good five minutes but he was still next to me all of a sudden guys he grabs what did he grab his little bucket that he pulls his like it's like a little bucket with a handle but it was empty he grabs the bucket from the handle and he swings it as hard as he can and just clocks me right here in the face i was like and he even twisted my face like this like, i was like and i just stood st st like shook <laughs> and in place and then he looks at me like yeah, like I hate you, you know, because you're on your phone. Like I, he didn't obviously didn't say that, but I could see his little grin like, like, yeah, like I did that, you know, because I was on my phone and I shouldn't have been, well, I should have been playing with him or paying attention to him. And I just put my, I literally threw my, we were over there and I threw my phone on this couch and I didn't see it again until Blanca came down from doing her, I think a sponsorship or something upstairs and oh no you got home yeah you were, you, were somewhere, you were out and then i was like you know, and we played and we had a blast and i was like you know like babies try their best to communicate to you so yeah. if they're grabbing sharpies and scribbling on the walls it's not because of that it's may it might be another reason you're not paying attention to them you're not yeah. tiring them out just like a dog will rip your couches out because they have a lot of energy did you walk them did you get them mm -hmm. tired did you stimulate their brain no okay that's fine dogs have every right to rip that's your on you baby you know so yeah they, it has a lot to do with that and i remember guys when Franco was born i was like oh my god like jonathan is not patient at all it was my biggest fear honestly because i knew how impatient he was but kind of i would always look over it because i've seen him interact with kids i've seen him take care of his uh, brother so i knew that he had a sweet spot for kids right so then when franco comes along and it took him a while i feel like it wasn't that Jonathan was impatient. It's, it's that you you told me you would get stressed because you didn't know what to do. Like, you didn't yeah. know how to help the situation. I feel like Jonathan's always trying to see how he can better the situation instead of just being like, okay, I'm just going to go through the situation. Yeah, you know? my impatience and, and over for stimulation never came from Franco himself. It came from the situation, if that makes like, sense. I remember um, if he would cry a lot, he wouldn't he jonathan told me like i thought he was mad because franco was crying until one day we sat down and i told him like hey I, why are you like this and he's like i'm not mad because franco is crying i'm mad because i don't know why he's crying and i don't know how to help him like yeah. not cry you know and it's like that's crazy because you just like they can't really communicate with you like that so 
it's just patience is key guys honestly i think patience and knowing that i just feel like knowing that whatever you're doing to this kid right now it's gonna create him into a successful or an unsuccessful adult and that is the biggest thing especially because it like it talks a lot about how he's going to be as an adult but also how your relationship is going to be when they are an adult so if you want them to come back for summer break or for christmas like you better make sure that you establish a good a good childhood for them guys let me tell you something funny you like we were thinking about this with franco's like franco for for a while now we're kind of opening to the idea of having more kids but for a long time, ever since we had Franco, we're like, we're one and done, you know, yeah. that's our only kid. So we would always joke about like, Franco, we have to make our relationship work, like, or we're going to end up in a retirement home. Yeah. Like, that is my biggest fear, because my mom, if a lot of guys, I've never said this, but when my mom first came to the USA, one of her first jobs was cleaning retirement homes. So sometimes I would go with her and I would, and I volunteered in high school at retirement homes and it was the most depressing place in the world, in the world. Imagine this person that had a whole life and it's like a grave it's like a junkyard for people mm, if you think sad. about it so but they're still breathing and living and uh so i was like you know what like if frank that's the beauty of having a lot of kids because then you have a lot of people to take care of you when you're older but i was like if we mess up with franco like he either likes us and we stay with him and his wife or he throws us in a retirement home you know but i was like you got to treat your baby like an investment like if you don't treat this human being kindly and loving karma's a bitch and when they grow up they're not going to want to do anything with you and you're going to end up in a freaking retirement home or even worse in the streets if you can't afford that you know yeah so that is that was our biggest thing with franco but now i think we're open we, I mean, we do want more kids, right? Now we do. Remember when Blanca would say, hell no, Dude, no kids. and you know what? Them. Karma is a little witch because you guys would always tell me, like, girl, wait till he turns one, wait till after the first year. You're going to say you want more, you want more. And I was like, hell no, girl. Like, it wasn't even the labor, nothing. Like, it was just the stress of knowing how to care for a child knowing like you know all the trauma like how to not give them trauma and now i'm like if i was pregnant i wouldn't be mad <laughs> you know so it's scary because literally my toxic trait is thinking that i'm pregnant every single month and i kid you not i take a pregnancy test every month every babe. month, every month after my period i'm like Fuck, she no. feels nauseous pregnant. no it's not the fast food <laughs> she ate all day or the starbucks that she drank no i'm pregnant <laughs> yeah so i literally for father's day i took a pregnancy test i was like if i'm pregnant i'm gonna just tell him <laughs> that's gonna be his present um but yeah like i wouldn't be mad and it's funny because now like i look at franco and i'm like why wouldn't i want 10 more of these and then i look at jonathan's mom and it's just like she's surrounded by so much love i feel like yeah. with all the kids and when we all go somewhere when, when with when his brothers like come over i'm like why wouldn't i want this you yeah. know like i would love to like have this even further like grandkids yeah like franco let's say we only have franco then he gives us max two one. or three kids or even one like is that really my life yolo right you only live once and in my life i'm only gonna have one grandson and it's grandchild. funny too because you know how like as time goes by every generation wants kids less and less and less yeah. i'm like what if he doesn't want kids yeah like at least we'll have four kids and he doesn't like dogs visit, and he doesn't like dogs, no, cats. He loves dogs um so yeah guys i think we're definitely open to the idea of having more kids when we're not sure we're not trying obviously please don't send me baby dust i'm good we already have a new baby coming and i'm so excited yeah. um but yeah anyways anyways guys little update on vibe and co this girl said update on vibe and co haven't heard how you guys feel about your previous launches love them guys Okay, babe, we're not going to touch a lot of topics, but or I'll touch a lot about this subject because you know how I feel about jinxing and stuff like okay. that. We're going to make this quick, guys. Vibing Co., something special is happening at the end of this month with Vibing Co., and it's the sole reason, not only why we open Vibing Co., but why I truly think, at least for me, is why God put me on this planet and why I've always had interest in the topics that I do. So just stay tuned for that, guys. Vibing has never been a gimmick a business to just collect money from you guys release shirts collect money release shirts and then and, and then never it's a cycle that never ends vibe and co has a purpose and i'm so excited for you guys to hear and see what it's about you're you're gonna be shook yeah and also we do want to thank you because every launch has sold out which is crazy it is 
so crazy so we just want to say thank you so much for all the support that you guys give us on vibe and co it's like when we first started it and i told jonathan like oh i want oversized shirts i want graphic shirts like oversized was the vibe i w- we would always think about oh well not a lot of people love oversized shirts you know but the way that people have showed up for our collections and our drops is insane so honestly thank you so much it's amazing and you'll very soon see like all this money that we've made guys we have not touched for like oh we made all the x amount of money let's go buy this Mm -hmm. let's go no it's all gone gone back to order more shirts and now to invest in it like heavily for the thing we're about to do and it's it's crazy guys i just i can't wait like this has been in the works since officially like that i took initiative for this since january so i'm glad that at the end of june beginning of july you'll finally see why we started vibing co yeah what its purpose in this world is and it has to do with you guys so that's all i'm gonna say um i think we're gonna end it here soon babe you want to pick one sure god damn what there's so many (laughs) While Blanca looks for one, guys, you said in that question previous um, launches, yeah, we're, I was literally talking to my compadre this other day. I was like, every launch, I order more and more shirts with the intention of keeping shirts on the website, like, there. You know what I mean? So, like, if you ever listen to a podcast and you're new, you're like, you know what? I, I like these guys. They're they're funny. They give really good advice. Let me go buy a shirt. And then you there can be a shirt available for them. Or just in general, let's say... Uh, I, I we released a Friday, but it wasn't the Friday you guys got paid. Then I have enough shirts that it can last me weeks and weeks until maybe you're back on your fee or maybe you had a lot of bills at the same time. There's still shirts there for weeks to come so you can buy one whenever you can and you don't have to forcefully do it out at launch. And I was telling my compadre Luis and my friend Marco, I was like, I can't, we can't get there. Thank God, like thanks to God and thank and thanks to you guys, we can't we can't reach that point yet. And it's such a blessing. And it's like, wow, like we've been in this game for so long and YouTube guys. And the fact that Blanca, what, babe, seven years now, YouTube or six? I think six. Six and three for me. And we're still usually there's this thing that like you only last two years at your height in social media and YouTube and all that. And the fact that Blanca's pushing seven years, I'm pushing three it's like and you guys are still selling out every launch that we do is crazy and and yeah it's crazy i have nine years on youtube but four years since i it took me four years to like make it yeah so i have five years on here fucking crazy okay do you find one yeah i found one guys and we're just gonna end it on a super light topic that i don't think deserves a lot of um talking about because i just think it's dumb and it's mom stroller shaming. And it's funny because <laughs> when Jonathan told me. I literally had to look it up right Yeah, now. he's like, what is it? And I feel like you only see this on t- TikTok because it's one of the most toxic social media apps ever. Who in the world gives a Tell flying flip about mom stroller shaming? So mom stroller shaming is basically moms thinking that they're too good for school or whatever too good for anyone because they have the duna or they have the i don't even know what these other the nuna car seats like shaming moms that have graco um what's the other one even flow and all of that who cares like honestly who cares just like why are you shaming someone that paid a hundred dollars to do the same thing that your baby's doing when you spend a thousand you know, like yeah. what? I don't see nothing shameful in that. I see more shame in why are you spending a thousand dollars on a stroller? You know, if you have the means for it, whatever. But it's like, just like, don't ever feel bad about what you put your babies in ever because they're only going to use a stroller for like a year. If that, like the Porta Bebe ones or the bassinet ones. And then after that, they're honestly like, it's so funny when I was talking to Lulu about this because she had, I think, the Nuna for Catalina. And tell me why this girl, Catalina, was, was so happy with her Target $25 <laughs> oh, yeah. mini stroller at the zoo. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, it does not matter what brand you get your babies for anything. Like, everything works the same, and that's it. Like, no one should ever shame you for the things that you buy. Yeah, guys. Or the brands that you wear, you know? Biggest piece of advice. Nah, nah, nah. Brands okay never mind i'm not gonna get into that topic but we know how <laughs> we know how i feel about brands but we literally t- touched top subject last podcast but anyways uh yeah i was and gonna poop. say what was i gonna say oh the best piece of advice that i've given other parents and it's worked i think it worked for my who did i just talk to 
someone that just had a baby wow i cannot remember names to save my life i feel like i can picture the conversation where i'm standing <laughs> but i can't like their face is blurred that's it's weird anyways we we're i was i told them before they had their baby i was like dude honestly when we had franco obviously you want to give them the best of everything the most expensive uh rocker the most expensive what's the bassinet all that and all for nothing franco never used any of that stuff we literally sold it for like not even half the price at our garage sale we had at sherman if you guys remember sherman like if you guys knew the street at our other house and uh <laughs> i always say, say oh the house at sherman but uh like if you guys knew at the other house you guys saw that i sold everything for like five or ten dollars when it was like that little thingy was like three hundred dollars and no it was like 450 wasn't it yeah so then all those babies i mean all those babies i'm just saying that babies sometimes are like very very like um Como se dice arrancho? What is that word your mom uses? Like, del rancho? Like, babies rancheros? are very, like, rancheros. Like, they don't know what's expensive or what's not. So, literally, we bought all this fancy stuff or from our baby shower as well for Franco. And then he didn't end up using none of it. He either wanted to be in our arms or screw the bassinet that moves, vibrates, does ocean shushes. noises, <laughs> shushes. Boom, sleeps in the middle of us. So really don't focus on that stuff, guys. Yeah. Buy it as you need it. Yeah. I think the coolest thing I've seen is the little fish that you press the button and you tape it to the, your baby and then <laughs> like, like it like <laughs> flaps his tail and hits your baby and puts him to sleep. Yeah. I think that's the best thing I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, don't don't do not stress about what brands you're buying your babies, girl. Please don't let anybody try to shame you into anything like that because at the end of the day, all babies need is milk diapers and a lot of love and a lot of love to grow like a little plant mm -hmm. but anyways guys that was it for today's podcast i'm exhausted i'm sure you guys are exhausted it's friday i hope you have a great weekend if you're back in no you're not in school if you're just working and it's getting hot echenle ganas tomense su agua de horchata y don't get dehydrated okay es viernes y el cuerpo lo sabe so you know after work today girl you're gonna go crack a cold one with your friends so just keep that in mind and have an amazing day Later. Yay Networks.